First and foremost, this is a disclaimer for Julia and Eileen's very toxic parasocial fans. Yeah, I'm calling you out. I've never, no, I have, that's a lie. I've seen lots of communities with very parasocial audiences, but Julia and Eileen's is bad, bro. They write very interesting comments on my videos. Look, I don't know these people. They're real people in the universe. I don't know them. I observe people's videos because why watch reality TV? when we've got it right here. They have volunteered their life to be decimated on the internet. But this is for my audience. We're observing for us to see what we can learn. If Julia and Eileen see this, it might help them, it might not. But it's not always about you, even though I know Julia and Eileen think it's all about them, it's not. But if you're gonna put your life on the internet, we're gonna watch the video and we're gonna learn from your life choices, okay? With that said, I wish them the best. I want to see healthy people thriving. One of the criticisms I got is that I titled my last video, Eileen and Julia break up because of their 40 year age gap, something like that. And people were like, they told you it wasn't about their age gap. That's not why they broke up. Obviously, if you look at the couple and you realize two women got together with a 40 year age gap, when the younger person was in her 20s, you can say it was a contributing factor to them breaking up. Pretending that it's not is a part of the delusion. Don't you think it's a little interesting that a woman in her 60s hasn't gotten her shit together? Don't you think it's interesting that she chose a partner so immature that she felt validated? Don't you think it's a red flag? The fact that they're acting like their age gap played no role in anything is as if to say the toxicity within itself existed outside of the age gap. And it could have some parts of it, but some part of you I think does have to be toxic to date somebody under 30 with a 40 year age gap. I just, there's just no way. I am giving an opinion. If you disagree with the opinion, great. But I have a feeling in this video alone, this is the update, this is divorce, my wife's response. This is them still pushing their relationship out, still making money off of it because it's the one thing that people love to watch on their channel more than Julia's music is their relationship drama. It's why people exploit their relationships on the internet for the views because people love to see it. Also why I do not use my relationship as content material. I use my life, me, Brittany, but like my relationship isn't on the internet because it gets parasocial, uncomfortable, and so inappropriate. It's just so inappropriate to do this to the person that you claim to love. But I have a feeling Eileen is about to come up with 10 different reasons why this relationship failed all relating to her age and her maturity level, which contributes to the age gap relationship being part of the failure. That's just my guess. You shouldn't be with somebody as fucked up as me. And I really am it's fucked up. Here. No, but it's true, darling. I'll say that. I mean, I know people are just gonna go crazy with why would you pay a cent for her to get out of prison? You would sell your soul to the devil to get out of, out of jail, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Then for you to ask me that December, I think it was, to, could I get some kind of a job, just like anything, a clerk? You know, I couldn't see myself going back to that. And, and I'm being really honest with you here. I know what you asked me. Already, bro. Already. Having to beg your mature, adult, much older partner to get a job and help? How is that not? That's what I mean when I say the age gap is the red flag. It means to say the older person might not be mature enough and might be only mature enough to date someone much younger which indicates a level of toxicity that might be a red flag in the relationship. That's why age gap relationships are so uncomfortable for people if the younger person is very young. Because it's like, why is an older person who's supposed to be way more mature and in a different part of their life even slightly interested in a much younger person? Now, again, if you're over 30, I don't care if you marry someone 40 years older, that's your business. But for me, I feel like under 30, especially early 20s, why is somebody who's much, much older even looking at you? And how is that not an indication? Or at least give me the grace to raise my eyebrow. Give me the grace to raise an eyebrow and just ask a question. Hi, sweeties. Welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, me and my wife are getting divorced. And this has been a really, really difficult journey and also really controversial. A lot of people have been sending me messages saying that they think Eileen was financially abusive against me. And to be honest, I don't know what to think about that. So also, obviously I don't have to tell my audience, but obviously we don't go on other people's videos and like yell at them, right? That's like not what we do because like we're way too old. We can't just go do that. But I think it's interesting that like Julia isn't even willing to know or can't know if Eileen was taking advantage of her financially. I mean, mostly I just think they were two toxic codependent people who took advantage and probably emotionally abused each other because they're too, like they didn't think about 
they weren't introspective enough to do different. Sometimes I think that's true because of the things that she has done. But at the same time, I can't imagine her purposefully hurting me. I truly believe that her intentions were always good, but she didn't actually think she was going to hurt me somehow. Which is the red flag that Eileen wasn't introspective enough at her age to do better. We are very different people and we see things very differently. Red flag in relationships, no shared values, statistical probability of divorce very high. So I thought it was important to show her side of the story. Although we announced the divorce together, most of the discussion about why we got divorced and uh, what our marital problems were was just me, you know, just my side of things. So I thought mm -hmm. it was important to give her the space to share her mm -hmm. side because she doesn't have a big platform like I do. So I just want to be fair. There's a part of me that is still really hurt and angry and upset with the things that happened. But I am doing my best to be graceful and stay friends and keep things. You know what might help with that? Not putting your relationship on the internet during a divorce. That's what I'm saying. Whose idea was to talk about this divorce while it was happening on the internet? It's one thing to pre-record videos and maybe wait six months and then think, okay, we're ready to share them. And again, I'm not moralizing yet. They're not evil people because they're doing this. I just think maybe it's not helping. Amicable and fair. This is actually a video me and Eileen filmed quite a few months ago while we were still together. And it was meant to be a video of us explaining. Oh, Oh. Oh. That's funny. I just said that and now she's okay. So this video is from a few months ago. Our marital problems to people because at that time we had mentioned to y'all that we were having lots of problems and people were really curious and we thought Remember how I said don't talk about your relationship with other people? They should have been talking to a priest or a therapist. But instead they went to the internet. This is what I mean when I say don't talk to other people about your relationships. If you're having problems and you care about the love of your life, go to therapy, go to a priest, go to whatever religious organization you're in, actually fix it. But instead they went to the internet. Oh, let's just make a video about it. But it ended up being a bit too intense and we never posted it. But now that everything has come to light and most of you have already seen my video explaining my version of our marital problems, we both thought it was the right moment to post this so you can see Eileen's side of things. So this video will be basically me bringing up my concerns about the things that happened and Eileen explaining her side and why she acted in certain ways. Do I agree with her responses? No. <laughs> I disagree with most of it, to be honest, but I thought it was important to let her be heard. Oh, so people man. Three minutes in and we're still on the introduction. People can make up their own minds about things. Like I said before, this is a very difficult moment for both of us. So please try to be kind. Please don't send hate to her. Or to I mean, I agree with that. Don't send hate. If you send mean comments to people, guys, what are you, five? Don't send mean people. Don't like be mean to people on the internet. Me. <laughs> so now I'm going to let you go ahead and watch the... <coughs> Snowfire says, you've seen my video explaining our marital problems is a wild sentence, bruh. <laughs> video, but before we do so, please subscribe and activate the notifications so you know when I post new videos and give us a thumbs up because it really helps. Guys, like the stream, guys, like the stream. The channel, my nails are a mess. <laughs> About Eileen's arrest at the airport in America. So this was like when the relationship first started a few years ago, right? It was a lot more serious than what you made it sound like, in my opinion. No, I know. Maybe it's it was just, just yeah. me no, being naive. No, it was me believing that, that it was just a, a logistical challenge that I could... I had made an appointment with them, you know, to go in the next morning. Okay, so... What I told you, what I imparted to you, was my impression of what the circumstance was. I never had had a desk warrant before that I was aware of. I never had this kind of thing happen before. So um, I did 
try to reconcile it before we left. I knew I had to handle it because that was the first time I was going back to America in years. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, since I'd moved back here so to the UK. So oh. I made arrangements. I called the office, you know, the um, the court system. I got through to them and I talked to somebody and she said, you know, I had the number of the warrant and everything. And what I told you was what I was. Discord said, I feel like I should not be watching this, bro. I feel like I should not be watching this. I feel very uncomfortable right now. I was told that I could come in, you know, I was landing on a Friday. We were landing on a Friday or Thursday, I think it was, and I could come in on Friday and take care of the warrant. And that would be to answer the warrant. And what that entailed, I just thought I would go through a hearing and everything would be fine. Um, I didn't know myself, you know, so my ignorance, you know, affected you in a terrible mm -hmm. way. About Eileen Surprise second arrest warrant in America. So they were going to release you from, yeah. Yeah, from the first jail. And then when they went to release it, they found that they you found had another, another warrant. warrant. Yeah, from, which I didn't know about. I've never known about. To me, it was very like, what? She has another warrant? Yeah, there were two hearings we had to go to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember how I said it takes two to have a toxic relationship? With well, somebody who's been in a formally toxic relationship. I will tell you it takes two. This should have been a reason for Julia to be like, I'm out. Julia didn't leave this relationship in the beginning. In the beginning. And she didn't think this isn't good. Yeah, so that was it very was terrible. So it was a very a very bad thing for me to find out. And yeah, it was. It was like uh we had the two hearings. The lawyer, um, which was great to have a representative, mm. I mean it was so worth the money. You know, in terms of what happened with the case, which is uh, they agreed to throw the case out. Mm. Discord says, so they are having this conversation for the first time. This is pretty wild. This is where I get very, very, very confused. This is where I get very confused. Is this the first time in the five year marriage you had or whatever it was that, that you are having this conversation and now it's on the Internet? Like, guys, your most intimate relationship conversations on the Internet. Don't get me wrong. In my 20s, I had a lot of conversations with the internet with partners that should never have been there or talked to friends about my my relationships that should never have had been had. But, you know, what's left over? Where's the intimacy between partners? Where's the where's the bond between partners if it's all over the internet? Now, don't get me wrong. You can say this about a lot of things. You can say this about, oh, why are you in a bikini at the beach? That should be for your husband. Okay, I get it. We all have our line in the sand. My line in the sand, this feels like a private conversation that should not be on the internet. And yet here we are. I mean, I know people are just going to go crazy with why would you pay a cent for her to get out of prison when she didn't have any money and you're spending, you know, you spent all this money, all your savings on the wedding. Well, of course I would because I didn't want you to get beaten up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a terrible situation. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm, until you've been a person who's been in that situation, to be, you would sell your soul to the devil to get out of, out of jail, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. About me not being able to attend my granddad's funeral because of the jail debt. But soon after we got back to the UK, my granddad passed away. And uh, that was very tough for me because at that time, because of everything that happened, I didn't have any money, so I, I couldn't go to brazil to yeah. the funeral but you know how would you know you know of course it's, it's not your fault how would you know no but yeah. i mean the, the point is and i th think you're too kind to say is that you married somebody with no resources do you know what i mean and it's not no but that's not the, that's that's the thing that you get wrong it's not about the money or resources is you putting yourself and us in that situation no, but, but what I mean is, if well, yeah, I of course that's what this video is about. But I mean, in terms of the money, I'm just saying one other aspect is that, you know, you couldn't go for your grandfather's funeral because we didn't have money to get you a ticket. You yeah, know? but I, I would have had the money if it wasn't for the bad situation. Well, that's what I'm saying. So ooh, interesting. I'm not a therapist. I'm a philosophy channel. But ooh, interesting. So they're miscommunicating, but also saying the same thing 
but also putting an emphasis on different things. So Eileen is saying, I should have had money. And Julia is saying, you shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. That ended up with you with no money. And Eileen is almost saying, yeah, but if I had the money. But they're kind of saying the same thing, but they are kind of talking past each other. No, yeah, but you said you married someone without resources. It makes it sound like, oh, it's because it was a problem because you didn't have money. for. That's true. It's not like, yeah, that's true. It's not like your partner has to work. That's not the reason. Is that your partner put you in a situation to have to spend your money. Because even if you had a stay-at-home partner, you still wouldn't want... It's not a matter of having the money. I agree more with Julia. It's not a matter of having the money. It's a matter of putting yourself in a position where the reason you don't have the money is because you did something dumb. For the ticket, that's not the problem. The problem is I me not having the money yeah, because of I the understand. situation yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm saying the same thing that we didn't... I'm saying we didn't have the money. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying anything different from you. She is, though. It's a difference. Because my husband doesn't work, but he also doesn't put me in situations where I'd have to cough up $30,000 because he did something stupid. It's not about working. Stay-at-home moms still have to be financially responsible. If you have a stay-at-home mom who doesn't bring in income, she still has to be responsible with the finances. Eileen is irresponsible with money and with choices. It's not about bringing in the income. I agree with Julia more. Uh Uh-huh. Ooh, about the first secret credit card incident. Y'all, I know this was an episode of How I Met Your Mother, and I know Lily and Marshall are perfect together, but I'm going to be real with you. Lily hiding her credit card addiction, divorce. This divorce, financial infidelity, still infidelity. And then a few months after this thing with my granddad happened, I found out that you took out two credit cards while we were in America and max them out. <laughs> and max them out? Girl, ma'am, sis, no, girl. Mm-mm, girl. You know what's crazy about that too? Is again, this is this is difficult. So I'm married, so all my finances are shared with my husband, obviously. And we don't do anything separate from one another. Like n- we make financial decisions together. Even if it's spending like, hey, can I spend 20 bucks on this? Hey, can we spend 30 bucks on this? Like, hey, can we fit into the budget? We just do that. It's really great. He's the first person I've ever shared money with. I've never, ever shared money with a partner. I've lived with the partners. I've never shared money with a partner. So now I live with him and we share money. It's really, really great. The reason I've never shared money with a partner is this. Somebody taking out a credit card and maxing it out. And remember, none of these were indicators for Julia to leave. None of this made Julia leave the relationship. At some point, Julia is also responsible for seeing a car wreck and not moving out of the way. No, yeah, yeah, but not not within that time frame. Yes, it was because you got them while um, we were in America. Well, I, I, I applied for them, but it took me like... Over the space of like two years, like no, it wasn't because at the beginning it was just a smaller amount. Yeah, but but what I mean, I, well, that's that's how I remember it. Yeah, but you're making it sound like I got the cards and then immediately started using them. I didn't. I waited. It was a while. Well, it, it, all right. Whatever. Well, that's good that, that you're here because we have different opinions of what happened or different. The toxicity in the city, in the city. Boom. Yeah, this sucks. This sucks. And I do put more responsibility on Eileen because she's the older partner. But also I have to hold, in my opinion, Julia accountable for not getting out of the way of the car crash that is slowly coming at her. It is literally coming at her. But I think Eileen is being incredibly inappropriate and again i know you guys keep saying not you guys i know their audience keeps saying the age gap isn't the reason they got divorced look another 20 something year old doing like making these mistakes much more tolerable than someone who's 60 making these same mistakes like you must see the difference between a 25 year old doing this and a 60 year old but that's britney i'm more lenient on people that are young because you usually learn those lessons in life so you don't repeat the mistakes The fact that Eileen reached such a high age and didn't learn those mistakes is what's shocking. It's like, oh, you're grown, but you're not grown grown. You're old, but you're not grown. 
Got it. Perspective. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of making it sound like, you know, well, this, well, your grandfather died, I'm maxing out a card. That wasn't the case. I mean, obviously, but it isn't the case. Oh. I would have bought you a ticket. I mean, it isn't the case. They weren't that that close. In... I'm, not, no, I'm not sure when exactly you maxed them out. So you might probably maxed it out before my granddad passed away then. No, I didn't. Of course I didn't. But, but you had the... So you didn't max it out before her granddad died, but then you didn't use that money to buy her a ticket to go see her granddad? The card when my granddad passed away because you got the card when we were in America. I didn't get the cards when we were in America. I I I got opened up an account. I opened up a uh, you know, bank account. And it was then that I applied. You know, I can look all this up. I mean, trust me. I Vampires uh, or vampiric says age shouldn't equal maturity. Age doesn't equal maturity all the time, but it should. I agree with you that age doesn't always equal maturity over time, but it should. Ideally, you would age with wisdom. Ideally, and I know I will die an unwise person, but ideally, as I get older, I will be wiser. That is the ideal. The goal is that wisdom is found in the old, even though wisdom can also be found in the youth. The fact that she is an old person who is unwise is me, that's bad. That, in my opinion, is a failure. That means you didn't age with wisdom. Look, regardless of differing opinions, regardless of how I disagree with my parents, they hold wisdom. Regardless of how I feel about my grandparents and their politics, they held wisdom. They weren't wise people because wisdom I don't think anyone's really a wise person before they die I think you hold wisdom I hold wisdom I'm not a wise person there's a difference to me personally in terms of words the way I think of a wise person but we all should hold wisdom even children can be have moments of wisdom you know but to be a fully whole wise person I think that's a lifelong journey and I don't think anyone ever reaches that sort of ideal that's in my head right I don't know of any person that like ever kind of gets there because everyone's got limitations and trauma and biology and all these other things, right? So you can't be completely wise all the time. But that's what I think of as like a wise person, someone who's always kind of wise. And I don't think that's humans. I just think humans have access to wisdom. And certainly at times in their life, they show it more than more than others. You know what I mean? I didn't get it suddenly. You know, if, 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 you know, I would have used the cards for us in America. You probably will disagree with this, but that's how I remember it. I paid this credit card. They you didn't pay my credit card. Yeah, well, I remember is I, at first I paid for it. Well, how could she not have paid for it? Like, this is what I'm saying. Did they even talk about finances? Did they share finances without talking about it? That's what's like, really, in the past, if I had partners who paid for stuff, I just paid them back. Or sometimes we'd say, don't pay us back, it's fine. But like I've never paid for a partner's like credit card or I've never paid like my partners don't pay for stuff without me paying. So unless you share money, why are you even paying for each other's bills? So that's what's interesting too. Why did so did they share money? And if that's the case, do they have access to each other's accounts? When you first maxed it out. Yeah. You didn't pay. But then, but then Julia, down the line. that's not true. You it didn't is. pay paying me credit I, Yeah, I remember transferring money to that. No, I don't know what you're talking no, but about, I remember. but you have not paid. I Maybe Eileen has Alzheimer's. Maybe she's not gaslighting Julia. Maybe she has a brain tumor. Because somebody needs to go look up their account and just pull up the receipts. But this is a toxic relationship. This relationship should have ended. It should never have started. I, no, you I did the first one. The first one I did. I'm sorry I disagree with you. I, I have a real understanding of what I've used those credit cards for. And what was it? There was, you know, you have had nothing to do. I've got you copies of the I cards. Remember never guitars. I remember you got guitars. But that had nothing to do with you. That was when you found out that I was using it. Yeah, Eileen whines, huh? Emmy says the whining dude. Eileen goes, <sighs> like that high-pitched kind of, <sighs> what do you mean? <sighs> what do you mean? <sighs> Mm-hmm. Cards, you know what I mean? But I remember paying for a card because I was worried about credit. Julia, get the receipts, girl. Credit scores. No, it, it, it really, I mean, I, if it had gotten to that point, I think, you know, I think I would have stopped if, if you were then sharing with me that you were so concerned about, you know, it affecting that's, your credit. That's how I remember it, but maybe. Oh, I'm so dumb. They're married. I'm so stupid. I'm so sorry. They're legally married. I'm so dumb. I keep 
in my head, I'm thinking this is before the marriage, but they got married very quickly, right? I'm so dumb. So this does impact their credit. Oh, this is a much bigger deal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was not putting an emphasis on how big of a deal this is. My bad. Let me read. They're married. They are impacting each other's credit, each other's reputation. Oh my God. Everything they do matters. Everything you buy. So when she said like, oh, me buying the guitars doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with you. Um, we're married. Um, we're married. Everything you do has something to do with me. If you buy a cappuccino, it has something to do with me. We're married. Oh, mm-hmm. Maybe I'm, I don't know. I was, no, I, I was a bit under distress that time. I mean, you know, you're welcome to your perspective, but I I can say that I, I mean, I know what I, I, I own the crap I've done, but that isn't part of the crap I've done. About Eileen not getting a job to help pay for the jail debt. I asked you if you could get a part-time job just mm -hmm. temporarily to help yeah. me pay it back. Mm -hmm. And then you borrow money from our friends. Um, and then, you know. Im Oh, and then you pay that back, you know, which is already really unfair. You know what I mean? And why I didn't act, I don't know. In part, it is because. What? Why was that? Un Somebody explain that to me. What did I miss? Why was that unfair? I haven't worked, you know, since I left America, really. You know what I mean? And I've meant to maybe go back to technical writing and then I haven't. You know, I've just been. Anyway, and then. Then for you to ask me that December, I think it was. To Does she have an ADHD, bro? She's all over the map. ADHD, senile, like something is, do like something is, something is the why. What is Eileen's why? Why is she like this? I know she was retired at some point, right? And then she was sort of like, that's why she had a trouble going back to work. But then like, what is playing a role in this, right? This is not a partnership, by the way. Like FYI, this is not a partnership. And I don't mean to brag. I'm going to brag. I'm going to do it. I'm so sorry. Like the stream for my bragging. But I swear it feels like I wake up every day and like I high five my partner and we're like killing it. I feel a little bit like we're bros sometimes. And I'm like, oh, we're killing it, bro. We're like so excited because we're like this team and I've never been on a team before. And it feels so good. And it feels like we're going to win the gold medal this year, bro. We're going to win the gold. It feels so good. It feels so good. This is. This was what my toxic relationships were like. It felt like we were having two different conversations. It felt like we weren't communicating. It felt like we were saying a lot of like legalese, a lot of like lawyer talk of like, yes, I can see how that's your perspective. I'm having a different perspective. And it's like, no, we need to be on the same page. What are we doing? You know, this is not a joke. If you think you are financially remembering something different or remembering something different financially, you need to go look up the receipts and see what's going on. They need to YouTube check receipts, bro. They need to make a vlog, a, a video essay on their own receipts for their own relationship. That would be a video. You know? Yeah, no, that's crazy, bro. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Uh, uh Lexi said that an ex where I was paying both our rent and when he got his tax return and spent it in a guitar instead of helping out, I dumped him immediately. And he said I was a gold digger. Pfft, bro, everyone, all these men out here, these women are gold diggers. Bro, what money you got to dig? Colleen says, Eileen reminds me so much of my sister's mother-in-law and I really think she has undiagnosed BBD. Maybe. Does Eileen have borderline? I don't know. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Could I get some kind of a job just like anything, a clerk? You know, I couldn't see myself going back to that. And, and I'm being really honest with you here. I know what you asked me, but I really believe that I would, you know, instead of just getting up and doing it, I didn't do it. You know, it's not that I said no. I said, I'm going to do this my way, which is I'm going to, you know, you've taught me how to edit. I'm going to do more on my channel. And then I didn't. ADHD. ADHD, bro, it's rough. Not all ADHDers. I'm just kidding. But like, I'm not a therapist, but I'm just saying that right there, she's telling on herself. Now, why is she telling on herself and what does it mean? I knew you gave me the skill. I knew you what to do and I just couldn't do it.
I knew what I could have done and I didn't do it. My wife asked me to help her and I abandoned her. I just couldn't do it. Why not? So my brain, my compassionate brain goes, okay, suffering. Why are we suffering? What is up with Eileen's brain that this is a decision she's making as a grown-up? Right? So what is it? Because that isn't normal. And if that's happening in your relationship now, huge red flag, guys. Okay? Ah, techno says sounds more like depression than ADHD. Could be depression. I thought depression too, maybe, because Eileen seems pretty depressed. But then why aren't we going to therapy? Why aren't we getting some some like help? Maybe it's narcissism and they refuse to take help. Maybe it's it could be so many things, but it obviously just isn't. Like there's a why. No grown adult, you know, without a reason, not an excuse, but a reason, sits there and lets their life fall apart. And makes bad decision after bad decision without there being a reason. And it's not just like, oh, I made a choice. Even that has a reason. Are you not introspective enough? Are you a one? Do you need to eat the cupcake? Guys, cupcakes in the chat, guys. Cupcake emojis in the chat. You know? So there is a reason why she did this. But I'm curious what the reason is. And then then the sort of anger at each other, I think, you know sort of yeah. we both had reason to be angry you a greater reason really and anybody yeah. would agree you know yeah about the five-star hotel in turkey you said that if it wasn't a nicer hotel you would well, rather I mean, not go what i said to you is i don't want to travel and be made to uh, you know i don't have to travel um you wanted me to go i wanted to go but i didn't have to go what i ended up finding us was something that happened to be for turkey five star and all inclusive so it ended up being what i thought if i remember correctly reasonably affordable i didn't know it was a big stretch but you know given the pattern of my behavior from what we're talking about today, I imagine now that I didn't see that this was a real stretch for you. It's not so much the money, it's more like the principle that yeah. I felt like after- Values. This is a values difference. And that's the issue. A values difference is the make or break in so many relationships or even friendships or even business relationships, right? Everything that I've been through you could have just gone with me, even if we stayed somewhere really shitty. Yeah, but I mean, <coughs> but things were related in time. Sorry. I- Yo, that's like a COVID cough right there, baby. That's like a COVID cough right there. Ingrid says it's the ADHD and depression combo. And then Techno says the executive dysfunction is so much harder when you feel, when you don't feel worth it. So many things could be at play here. I really, I really want to know what it is. I understand what we're talking about here. <coughs> is <coughs> poor thing jesus I'm sorry is a pattern of behavior i think what's troubling here is you've married an older person who has had you know maladaptive episodes you know what i mean oh, is that just therapy talk we learned off the internet or did we go to a therapist i mean and then i brought that into our marriage it's okay for somebody to have history you know what i mean and i can understand you being angry although we had beautiful times since all that you know yeah. then we've done wonderful things had great times always in the back of my head i've, I've had this anger yeah yeah and i think i Rightly so i've dealt with it not in the best way uh, with because how do we even deal with with that? Like I've we've we've talked a lot. We had the same conversation a million times yeah, before. Yeah. But I feel like even so, I had this underlying anger, and I've been a bit shitty and passive aggressive with you. I mean, in a way, is it possible to overcome? I just don't know. You know. Oh, so no, okay. but I. But... Ugh, ugh. The way they talk to each other makes me want to old yeller myself bro the way they talk to each other is so annoying because funny enough Eileen infantilizes herself and then Julia reinforces it like the irony is that Eileen will infantilize herself and Julia will literally reinforce it and I'm like stop reinforcing it the the weaponized incompetence is very frustrating now if you have a literal medical problem if you literally have a good reason why you're, quote, not working or 
contributing to the household or whatever else. Like you need to find out why that is and then you still need to pull your weight. Now the weight will look different because we'll take into consideration those things. But it sounds like Eileen's not pulling any of her weight and Eileen got some weight on her. So you better be pulling it, girl. Okay? Now, I feel like someone should take all their videos and send them to a therapist. But of course I, it is. Of course it is. No, but I don't know because some things just, there's a bomb that goes off or, you know, a couple gets bombed. You know what I mean? Your innocent, innocence was shattered by this dose of, of real, Eileen reality. About the last secret credit card incident. I found out that you had more credit cards that I didn't know about. Yeah. And I asked you to please just return the credit cards. And I thought, I said to you that I was going to leave if you didn't return the credit cards. Do you remember that? Yeah. Or, or Ultimatums don't work. I don't believe in them. I don't believe ultimatums work. Boundaries are about you. Hey, I love you. In this marriage, it's had beautiful moments. Because you've opened up a second credit card without telling me, I'm going to need to leave this relationship. You can keep doing you. I'm not asking you to change it, but I'm going to leave this relationship. An ultimatum saying like, you better close this credit card or I'm leaving you. She should never have opened it up in the first place. The financial infidelity should be considered abusive, in my opinion, or at least toxic enough, honestly, to end that relationship. I love my husband. I really think he's my soulmate or one of the many. I love him so much. At this point in our relationship, we are so honest and transparent. If either of us opened up a secret credit card and maxed it out, it would just shatter any of the trust we've built. Remember how we watched the Gottmans the other day and they said betrayal is the key of a failing relationship. It is so hard to recreate a good relationship when betrayal has been ha has happened. And so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking like, it's not about telling Eileen you need to change. It was the fact that you stayed when she exhibited bad behavior. Now, ironically enough, Julia is asking Eileen to take accountability on matters of principle that Julia herself can't uphold or didn't uphold in the past. Now they're getting divorced, so that's good. But earlier, Julia, Julia said, it's the principle of the matter. It's the fact that it's the principle of the matter. And Eileen was like, no, I just, it had nothing to do with you. This is a fundamental difference in values, bros. If you're dating and your relationship looks like this, break up. Break up right now. To keep one, was that? No, I asked oh, you to okay, return okay, all okay. of them. And you said, oh, no, can I at least keep one? And I said, no, if you keep a credit card, I'm going to leave. Now, she might have some sort of like addiction or control issue or a desire to have a credit card. So, you know, she she might be bad with finances because finances, I think being bad with finances is either an education issue or a mental health issue, right? Because I, I think those things often overlap. And yeah, I guess I remember that. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to fight you on this because I, I remember, this one I remember very, okay. very clearly. Like, I'm sure I said that then. It was like mirrored the credit cards, basically. And you said that you weren't going to give up on the credit card because you were just trying to build your build up yeah, your credit yeah, score. Yeah. And Everyone always says that. Everyone who's bad with finances goes, I just want to build up my credit by being bad with credit. Girl. Okay, see, is this when Julia left? I had a right to having a credit score and you didn't, didn't give it up for me. Like a lot of this discussion. No, you don't give it up for your partner. You give it up because it's a part of your value system. Do you see? See, these things bother me. I used to think in my 20s that you give up things to be in a partnership. No, you have a partnership that agrees on values. So you're not giving something up. You're changing to better the team. But it doesn't and should not feel like a bad thing. You should, Jewel, Eileen should be so happy to make the best decision for the marriage. Not like, oh, I did this for you, though. You should be doing it for your marriage because it's a value, because you literally decided it's the right decision. My partner and I, we make the best decisions for the marriage. We literally pride ourselves in making the smartest decisions for our marriage in the moment. Okay, we think this is the best decision. Let's do that. We don't sit there and think, okay, we'll make a half wrong decision, but a, a half right decision. No, we have to make the best decision for the team, bro. 
A coach doesn't screw his players over by only giving him or them a half good play. Make a good play, bro. And if the play ends up being wrong, go into it thinking it's good. Eileen, Julia, they know this is a bad play. But it's almost like they're both willing to compromise. Don't compromise on bad. I don't remember things being so cut and dry. It was, no, it was like are, an ultimatum. It, yeah, it was yeah, like it, a very clear ultimatum. I remember exactly we were in the bathroom. We were in the shower. Oh. And I was like mm -hmm. by the door. And I said, like, you've got to choose me or the credit cards. And you, I don't remember how you worded it, but basically you chose the credit cards. Well, you weren't. Well, anyway, yeah, okay. Uh, I, maybe I just have a very damaged way of looking at things. I didn't think there was that that finale. No, I said, like, if you, if you yeah. want this to work, remember yeah. I said, if you want to give this another chance, if you want this to work, just give up the, the credit cards and we'll try. Yeah. And you said, no, I'm, I'm going to keep at least one. Yeah, I guess I just was manipulating the situation to try to get what I wanted. And I think that's one of my problems, you know. But what makes Choices. me so sad is that you shouldn't be with somebody as fucked up as me. And I really am fucked don't up. Here. No, but it's true, that. darling. Don't say that. No, but it is true. I mean, we really, you know. No, but you just need to go to therapy. Yeah. Because you're, you're. Therapy and philosophy. So what at the end of this, she goes to therapy, but she still wants to live this way. Or what if, you know, therapy is not going to fix everything. It's not like you go to therapy and it's magical. And then all of a sudden, woo. You know, therapy isn't, when I say go to therapy, I'm not saying, oh, therapy and that's it. It's like saying go to the gym. That's one of the many steps you have to take. So this idea of like, just go to therapy, you'll be fine. It's a values issue. What if after her values still say, I want to spend my life this way. I want to do this with my life. You're a beautiful person. You have so much love. No, don't cry. Oh, I feel like a shitty no, person now because I'm making you cry. No, that's okay. But you, you're such a beautiful person. There's so many wonderful things about you. You just need to, like, address it instead of just yeah, pretending but, but it's okay. I wish I hadn't learned these lessons during my relationship with you. It's the saddest thing ever no. is to have hurt and affected someone so much as I have you, like, you don't deserve any of this. You don't deserve, you know, any of it, really. Nobody deserves anything. How about that? You're all just little animals on a planet. You create the environment in terms of relationships that end up creating your world, right? If the whole world is a reflection on us as a collective, as a species, then within the micro bubble of your life, you are a contributing factor to the relationship. That's why I say it takes two to have a toxic relationship. Not that people can't be victims and participants in their choices. But Julia is the money maker. She's a decision maker. She's a grown up. She's made mistakes. We all do. But she also tolerates and, and does infantilize Eileen. Look at her. Oh, you're a great person. You have so much love to give. Hey, bro, a part of you is so loving, but that's not the loudest part of you. The loudest part of you is a piece of fucking shit. So, you know, either change that. Or, uh, you know, I guess you are uh, the whole of you. So the whole of Eileen is shitty. That's shitty people behavior. But at the same time, that's just my opinion. I think most of Eileen's behavior has been shitty. And the fact that I, or Julia keeps saying, like, you're a beautiful person. You have so much to give. You just need to do this one thing. This ain't about just therapy, girl. This ain't just about therapy. And, you know, I hate myself. Oh, don't cry. I'm so sorry. I'm it's so okay. sorry. No, that's all right. Don't be sorry. It's I'm sorry. The now, if she is a vulnerable narcissist or something like that, she probably does fundamentally think she's worthless. And she does probably hate herself. And that sucks. That's a really hard thing to suffer from. Right? Maiden says her actions and words do not match. She engages in fraud because she is one. And I think that's probably true. And I think that's really sad. So therapy would be very helpful and the gym, and philosophy. She's got to know why. Why does she allow herself to do things? Why won't she do certain things? Why will she do other things? I mean, Eileen just isn't a functional adult. And again, that's why age gap relationships this big, this specific, when the younger person is under 25, it makes me raise an eyebrow, or even under 30 makes me raise an eyebrow. 
Because I'm like, what's wrong with the older person? What's wrong with the older person that they chose the younger person? We know what's wrong with the younger person. They choose the older person because they're stable and older and hopefully wiser and can teach them something, which is a little bit of parentification of your partner. Why did the older person choose the younger person? Red flag. Oh, does that feel really bad? No, but I mean, it's important, don't you think? I don't know how, if I can grow and be healthier. That's what's really... Of course you can. So you need... No, don't do it for me. You got to do it for yourself. No, I know. I know. I know. No. Because... Yes, Julia, you got to do it for yourself, girl. You need to be... I want you to be happy. And you, you're so intelligent and so wonderful. And you have such a sweet heart. You do. You can achieve so much and you can be so happy. But, but you just, need to take better heard, care of yourself no, and but make I better you decisions. So... so uh, do you have a tissue anywhere? You, yeah. you have your little thing there. Um, You can talk about bad things that you think I've done. But nothing. You're You're magical. You're like the most amazing wife, you know? I don't like the way they lie to each other. They uh, pedestal each other and I kind of hate that. That's it. Ooh, that was difficult to watch. I hadn't watched that in a while. And in some ways, it makes my blood boil. In some ways, it makes me sad. In some ways, it makes me relieved that this part of my life is ending. And then now we are friends going forward. I am still processing this. I'm sure I will still be talking a lot about it. I hope that doesn't annoy you, but <laughs> this channel is about my life and uh, I think it's still going to take me a little bit to fully move on. But once I do, I promise. I think it's interesting that she's telling Eileen to go to therapy. Is her, is this, did she go to therapy? Because she still stayed and chose Eileen. And again, therapy is not the end all be all. You can't just go to therapy. You also have to do so many other things. You have to understand why you were there. What are your values? Will you make this mistake again? There's so many things, but I'm just like so curious. And then why are we sharing it to the internet? Is, you know what I mean? There's like so many things, you know what I mean? So I will stop going on and on about it. But I appreciate your patience and your support. You have been amazing and so understanding. I really appreciate it so much. She's not talking to us. We're, I'm not subscribed to her. I'm just here to see the observation. We're observing a real person's life. They're real people with real lives. And the question is, do you see yourself in them? If you see yourself in them, think about that. You know, one time <laughs> I was dating a guy and I was really going to give it my all. I was like going to give it my all. But something was fundamentally wrong. And something deep inside of me was like, God, something's wrong. What is wrong? At one time, one of my friends who's married is married to a person that I just think is awful. Just like awful, you know? Just like kind of a useless human being. But okay, we love him. We love it. That girl and I were at uh, the same party one time with both of our guys. And she looked at me and said, oh my gosh, don't they remind you so much of each other? I'm really, I'm really rooting for them to both get better because both of our guys were struggling at the time. And I looked at her and I looked at her guy and I looked at my guy and I was like, are they similar? And I was like, oh my God, I got to break up with this person. Because in my head, I was observing someone else's relationship and thinking, oh my God, they are married to my nightmare, my living nightmare. And then she compared our boyfriends, our partners to each other. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. Sometimes it's hard to see it when you're in it. But I would ask, like, from then on, I asked myself, like, which relationship reminds me of my relationship? Which friendships remind me of which friendships? Like, which tropes am I? Am I which trope am I? And it was so clear to me that something was fundamentally wrong. And by the way, the key component between those two people is very Eileen. Talk a big game, never change their ways. They're getting older and nothing is getting better. Like they keep saying, this is the problem. This is the problem. But they keep both taking financial advantage of people. They're emotional vampires. They're not doing better. Everyone thinks they're charismatic and wonderful, but they're not getting better. 
And why aren't they getting better? So Eileen and Julia, you know, we don't know these people. Obviously, no one in my audience is going to go and bother them. And I'm not trying to bother them either. I'm just trying to say, if you see yourself in them, run. Run away from yourself, run away from them, and go meet the real version of yourself. Snowfire says, bro, thank that girl. Thank that girl saved you. Bro, bro, that girl saved me. She did. She really, she did. You know what sucks? Still, She's still trapped in her marriage or her relationship or whatever. She stole in that. She she went in and it's not great. You know, that was the irony is like I got out of my bad relationship and she stayed in hers. And I think about her all the time. Like, I wonder if she's OK because it did not get better as far as I know. And I just thought to myself, like, this cannot be my life. This cannot be my life. I'm an adult. I get to choose my life and I don't want this one. And I really am so grateful to that, Brittany, because now I found the love of my life. I'm happy every day. We be happy every fucking day, bros. And I'm so grateful. God, I'm so grateful. Yeah, that conversation fundamentally changed the trajectory of my life. You know, it really did change the trajectory of my whole life. I think I would have eventually broken up with him regardless of that conversation, but I would have waited longer. And that conversation really made me go, oh, my God. Sometimes we really do see ourselves through the lens of other people. We need other people's perception of us to confirm what we see in ourselves or to help us open our eyes. You know, sometimes somebody will come to me and say, hey, I'm really worried about you. I'm like, oh, my God, really? Why? And then they'll give all these reasons why they're worried about me. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't map onto anything that's actually happening in my life right now. Let's talk about it. And sometimes people are wrong about their perceptions and you have to know yourself well enough to say, "Mm, that's not the right perception. But then sometimes people will see you and say something and it's your opportunity to say, oh shit, maybe they're perceiving something very correct about myself that I need to change. And then you got to make that change. Brianne says, Brittany, why do you always make me say, dang it, Brittany, when you mention something, I could probably pay you to roast me, bro. I should have been a comedian in my other life. I should have been a roaster, bro. Discord says, Brittany, realizing she's dating her own personal brand of hell. Let me see the gif you sent. L- literally. Literally, Discord. Oh, my gosh. You know, I think that's the most difficult part, though. How do you know when you're in a bad relationship and you should break up? And how do you know you're giving up on your marriage before you should? Because lots of people out here given up before they should. But then I kind of have a theory that if you're married to your soulmate, you'll never have to give up on them because you're both going to work so hard to make sure it works. I know so many good people who have really toxic on again, off again relationships. And a lot of them are romantics. And I think I want to make a whole video about this. I want to make, God, I'm so tempted to do like video essays once in a while because I want to put together my thoughts, but it needs to be like heavily edited so I can get it done very like, live streams are really, really good for this kind of stuff, but really, really bad for putting together a concise thought without all the, the, this like brainstorming parts. It's weird. It's like a double-edged sword. Streaming allows me to brainstorm like I'm doing now. But like I want to make a video about people who romanticize their life and therefore romanticize their pain and therefore keep the cycle of abuse going because it's too romantic and they don't want to let it go because they see themselves as like how romantic is it that we've cheated and yelled and hit each other. But after eight years of a relationship, we're like still together. And I'm like, is that romantic? And I think it is in the lens of a romantic I think people who romanticize their tragedy end up dying in one because it's just, it feels so good, like a drug that's like abusing your liver, but man, you feel so good. And I think I'm at this point in my life where I think I'm romantic. I do. I think I'm a romantic person, but I'm not a romantic. Like I do not think it's cute when people are abusive. I don't think it's cute that you guys have hit each other for 10 years, but you're still together. I don't think it's cute that you're on again and off again. I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's romantic. I think it's sad. I'm depressed. I hear your story and it makes me want to die. It's so sad. You know? So I I think there's something about Julia and Eileen's relationship that just makes me sad, bro. It's sad. You know? Vampiric says, Brittany, something that confuses me is that you put on a mask when socializing, but are most likely different alone and don't view your public mask as yourself. So how to see the difference? Well, 
when you're socializing with other people, you also have to um, sort of meet each other in the middle. So there's a version of yourself when you're socializing that I think is just about being appropriate, right? So you always have to put on a mask when you're socializing because you're you're trying to avoid conflict and you're trying to be good mannered. So th- there's a difference between putting on a mask to deceive and putting on a mask to create peace. And there's an appropriate time to take off the mask and create not peace. Maybe I want conflict. I don't want peace today. And then there are appropriate times to put on the mask and like, but it's never appropriate to manipulate maliciously. I don't think it's ever appropriate or moral, in my opinion, to deceive people, to take advantage of them. And so if you're putting on a mask to socialize, you're just doing it to create peace. If you're putting on or taking off a mask to be more honest, that's also a thing. Sometimes I put on a sort of a mask to have fun with friends. Like, hey, right now we're not in our thinking mask. We're in our have fun, don't think mask. It's more like a version of yourself. Is that what you mean? Is that the question, right? Because for me, it's about how to make a cohesive environmental situation, like how to actually have fun today. And there are versions of myself that like, that's why I love being with my husband. I feel like it can be all versions of myself, masked or unmasked, unmasked, right? And he gets it. He doesn't need to like, he doesn't take it personal or he, he can translate it or we can discuss it. But I can talk like myself. And when I say myself, I mean all of myself at once and not be taken out of context. But when you're socializing, obviously you've got to be appropriate. You know, I'm in Croatia. I have to dress a different way or I have to speak a different way or I have to be aware their customs are different. It's cool. It's like I get to put on a version of myself that is cohesive, but still me. I'm still myself. I'm just good mannered. You know? Techno says one of my favorite quotes recently has been growth is painful, but being stuck in agony, but stuck is agony. Ooh, growth is painful, but being stuck is agony. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm all about that growth, baby. Some people like the agony, though. I think some people are masochists in a way. I'm a masochist, but not in that way. One time I remember having a, I was like in the fetal position and I was in so much internal, like just so much internal pain, emotional pain. And I was so, I was just in so much pain. I remember thinking, I think I'm done with this. I think I'm done with this. And that's a very interesting realization of like, oh, I think I'm bored of my own agony. It feels a little 2007. I think I'm ready to be the healthy version of myself because I romanticized a lot of my pain growing up because you were experiencing pain. You wanted to put like a name to it and you wanted it to be the thing that made you different. And then I realized like, oh, I'm different regardless if I'm happy or not. Might as well be happy. Oh, we are all, you know, unique. We're not special. But we are, like, I can never be replaced. I am mean. I'm, that's it. But also, I'm not special. Just the fact that you exist on the planet, just the fact that you're alive, just the fact that your sperm and egg combination made it to the surface, do you really need to be more unique than that? Do you need to be more special than that? And if you do, maybe you should ask yourself why, you know? Vampiric says the question is, all, are all of those masks also yourself? Mm, that's a good question. I think... I think I'm always myself except when I'm not. And the only time I'm not myself is when, well, I should say fully myself. Mm, Think of it as always being yourself, but diluted. A lot of the time I dilute myself to be more cohesive with the group I'm socializing with. That's why I'm not much of a group person. Because every time I was in a community, I had to dilute myself. And it gets exhausting. I don't like doing it. I'd rather just be at home. Because at home, I feel great. I love my own company. I'm very happy here. I never have to dilute myself. I'm functional. I pay my tax. I do my job. I have a healthy relationship. I have a cat. My life's great. But when I'm in a community, I always find myself diluting myself. Um, Even with friends and family that I love so much and we get along so well, even we're like, okay, I'm done socializing. Because that means a version of, like, we have to be a version of ourselves that can socialize. I'm not always a social person. Brittany isn't always social. I do not desire social, like, activity a lot of the time. So I have to be the version of myself that feels like being social in the first place to even be social. 
Like so many of my siblings are like this too, where I'm like, hey, do you want to socialize? And they're like, ah, uh, uh, that means I have to get into the car and that means I have to take a shower and that means I have to drive to you. Even for Easter, my mom said some of the siblings didn't come home because they didn't want to drive the 45 minutes. My siblings also go through moments of like, ah, I don't have to take a shower and get out of the house and like drive all the way there and drive all the way back. That's social. And then sometimes you're like, yeah, I'll drive three hours to come see you, bro. I'll be extra social. So I think, you know, sometimes when we're working, we put on a version of ourselves that doesn't exist so we can get through work. I'm really lucky that my job doesn't make me do that in the same way, right? Like the only thing I have to do on stream that I feel is exhausting is um, censor myself. It takes my spoons to censor myself. But at the same time, like it's appropriate and I have to do it and I don't know who's watching me and I, <laughs> you know, and that's frustrating. But, you know, it's not just about me. When I'm at work, it's not just about me, even though 99% of it is about me. You know, Allison says me, to be honest. Discord said, yes, exactly. I got to translate myself as well. But the dilute self is a great way of putting it. I got to dilute myself with the other people and then end up spending more energy. Yeah. And then, and then you can come home and recharge your spoons. Spoons in the chat, guys. Spoons in the chat. It's like, you know, whatever, whatever makes the most efficient sense. Whatever is good for your mental health, spiritual health, health, and just like what you got to get done as an adult, you know? Kel, is it Calavera? Calavera? So some people internalize their pain to almost a point of duty or a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Instead of to get off the whipping... Instead of getting off the whipping post and just be not even happy, just to be content with their lives. Yeah, I think, well, I think there's something about, especially in America too, men feel it where they feel very strong for, for putting up with the pain. I think it's why people stay in toxic relationships like Julia and Eileen. I'm sure a part of their brains were like, we're married, we're in love. We have to put up with this now. You have to put up with your partner. You have to suffer the pain of your relationship. Alex says there's uh, definitely a difference between masking to dilute yourself versus masking to not be yourself. Autistic unmasking made me separate those two things. Love that. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 